Um, hi, I'm Ariana. I'm 13 years old and I live in Auckland, New Zealand. And I'm Anya and I'm 14 and I live in Massachusetts in the USA. So Ariana, how did you get introduced to Stone Soup? Um, originally it was like the school holidays and I was just um, looking for writing competitions and then I saw it. So, and it looked interesting. Cool. So are you a subscriber or you think, yeah, like? I might be. Okay. <laughs> I can't remember. Cool. That's cool. Yeah. Um, I know that you submitted to the book contest last year and you were a finalist and your novella is being serialized. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, have you ever submitted like short stories or poetry or anything just to the magazine in general? Um, no, that was, um, submitting my novella was like the first time I submitted to Stone Soup, but I've submitted to other kind of magazines in the past as well. Okay, cool. That's really cool. So, yeah. Where do you think that you draw inspiration from in your writing? Like, are there certain authors or books or anything like that? Um. Uh... I enjoy reading like thrillers and things and the novella that I wrote obviously isn't a thriller but um, I guess um, my inspiration comes from like my favorite authors and I guess everyday life. Okay cool and who are some of your favorite authors? Um, I think one of their names is Karen M. McManus. She wrote the book One of Us is Lying and then I also like Jacqueline Wilson. And then there are a couple other, oh, there, are, there are a couple other authors, but um, yeah, most of the time I just pick up whatever book looks interesting. Okay, cool. And I know you mentioned real life also as an inspiration. How so? Are there like certain things in your life that you like to take inspiration from or anything like that? Um, yeah, just like interesting things that happen. So, um, for example, uh, The Trials and Tribulations of Swifty Appledoe was um, written after like I guess I felt a bit jealous about something and so I just decided to take <laughs> inspiration from that and then just write and then originally it was only going to be like a very short story but then I was like eh, might as well continue. <laughs> that's, that's really cool I like that's a really fascinating like transition in your writing. Um, what do you think is your favorite thing to write about just in general I guess? Um, I'm not really sure. I guess just short stories with like an interesting ending. Um, at one point I was interested in writing about horror, but it did not end well. <laughs> like, yeah, th those stories were not good. But uh, yeah, I guess just short stories in general. Nice. What specifically like about horror did you, what draw, what drew you to that, do you think? I guess the suspense and uh, like how you can build up on detail and like create a really cool scene. Are there, yeah, are there, I guess, certain things that you like to use in your writing, like figurative language or suspense or things like that? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I like to use a lot of metaphor and simile and I guess a bit of, uh, hyperbole I'm trying to remember everything I learned from my English class but <laughs> yeah that's really cool yeah I would agree I definitely also like metaphors and similes um do you think that the writing that you do on your own short stories and stuff is similar to the writing that you do in school because I know you just mentioned your English class um at the moment in my English class we're doing a lot of like unfamiliar text writing and so it's just analyzing stories at the moment and then we also do this um reading response thing where we uh where we get like a text or we choose a text and we have to write a response to it i guess the writing i do in my free time is is a bit more creative i guess <laughs> um, but yeah i do enjoy my english classes that's cool i definitely agree with that i feel like yeah, I like the writing that I do outside of school kind of gives me a little bit more space to breathe with what I'm writing. So yeah, I guess now we can start talking about your novella, The Trials and Tribulations of Swifty Appledoe. I think you may have already said this, but how did you decide to submit to the contest? Um, how did I decide to submit? 
So I guess I at the point when I when I discovered Stone Soup, I had already written um, most of the novella, and and then yeah, and I just thought it would be cool to submit and then see what happens. So I just submitted. Was it the first time you've written a novella, or have you written other ones before? Um, yeah, it's definitely the first time. It took a really, really long time. Um, yeah, before that, I had mostly written like short stories. The longest story I wrote before I submitted was about um, before I submitted to Stones. It was like like about ten pages, and that was like two years before I submitted. <laughs> yeah, so that was my first time writing a novella. What was it like to write a novella? Um, definitely a lot of persistence. Um, I had like a very basic plan that I stuck to. Uh, previous teachers that I had in the past had like told me to like, like literally plan up every single thing, but I prefer just having like a very loose plan so that I can like experiment and it's a lot more fun. Um, and Yes, at some sometimes I felt like giving up, and at one point I took a break from writing, but then I went back to it. Do you think having a plan helped you, or distracted you, or did it change at all as you wrote? Um, I think I, this sounds weird, but like I I kind of agreed with the plan, so uh, yeah, definitely helped me. Like when I was stuck for ideas, it kind of uh, helped me like move on to like the next thing and um, how I would write my story out. Cool. And what was that basic plan that you had from the very beginning? Like, what did you know one you wanted this to be about? Um, it was literally just numbered. It was just um, Swifty just realizing that she has jealousy about Stella and um, her just trying to be like Stella, but in the end realizing that she has her own gifts and talents and that she should really pursue those instead of trying to become like someone else. And so, yeah, so what do you, I guess, what does the novella mean to you in that sense? Like at its core, what does it mean to you? Why did you decide to write it about that? Um, well, at the, at the start, it originally, um, the story was original I, I originally created the story because it because I felt a bit jealous so I guess in a way it was just saying that you don't have to be like other people because you're special as you as you are in your as you as you are yourself um so yeah are there any I know I guess we kind of just talked about this with like the jealousy and figuring out who you are are there any other parts of the book that are like inspired by your own life or just things that I guess were just things that you thought of and you're like oh I want to include that um uh for example when um Swifty starts ballet I did ballet when I was five and I guess the memories always just came back to me so yeah I added that in and then some girls in my class um they they do hip-hop so I just um incorporated that in as well and I also used to take um drum lessons so that's where the part about Swifty learning the drums comes in uh, and I guess um, the whole thing that I guess Swifty's like dream to become like an actress is kind of the same as mine um, like I want to become an actress but I'm actually not that great at acting. <laughs> So that's really cool how you're taking all of these things from like different parts of your life and incorporating them into your writing. Um, who do you think is your favorite character in the book? Uh, probably Swifty because I relate to her um, quite a bit. Uh, and I, I guess she's, I guess I kind of like Stella as well. Like as a person, like she seems like, she seems like, because like in, she seems like quite a popular girl, but like she's actually really nice. And uh, normally like those kind of people that are like, you know, really popular and you see them as like having lots of friends, they might seem uh, kind of like, you can't like talk to them, but Stella's actually really nice and you're able to like talk to her and things. Like she's that kind of person. 
So did you know from the beginning that you kind of wanted to have this character arc for Stella as well as for Swifty? Or did that come in later? Uh, the character arc with uh, Stella, yeah, I guess so. Um, like at the end of the book, they kind of, you know, they sort out like the differences. Um, so yeah, I guess so. Was there anything that changed as you were writing it, whether related to the characters or related to the plot? Was there anything you were just like, oh, I should include that or no, I don't want to include that? Um, I'm not quite sure. Uh, I suppose um, when like later in the book, when Swifty um, meets again with like Mr. Cello, um, I didn't <laughs> I didn't originally plan for that, but I thought it'd be interesting. Um, so I, I added that in as well as like it also combined with her making a new friend. And so, um, yeah. Oh yeah, that reminds me that like the whole thing at her recital, was that inspired by anything that you has happened to you or that you've heard of or is that just something you thought of? Because I thought that was a really great scene. I loved that part. Uh, it just, yeah, I just imagined it. Um, honestly, it, it had never happened to me before. I have never played the violin, um, I, nor do I know anyone who plays the violin, <laughs> but I thought it would be quite interesting to see what would happen. Um, Although, um, obviously, since I don't play the violin, I have no idea if that would actually happen. <laughs> I played the violin for like three years when I was like nine. I wasn't great. Nothing like that ever happened to me, though. Yeah, that was great, though. That definitely, I feel like, encapsulates a lot of the feelings that come with recitals and everything. Um, what was the most fun part of writing The Trials and Tribulations of Swift the Apple, though? Um, honestly, the start, uh, I like, like, just starting writing, like, a new story, because you kind of get, like, I don't know, like, an adrenaline rush as you're writing it, like, you're like, oh, this is so cool, and then also the end, once I had, like, finished, um, all my work, that was, like, a really satisfying, um, part of it, and then also when I submitted. <laughs> nice, and what was the hardest part of writing it? Uh, probably guessing the, uh, word count to, like, 20,000 words, because I had to add, like, lots of extra sentences and lots of extra words, and I had to keep on, um, checking uh, how many words I'd written. That was quite challenging. What's your favorite part of the book, I guess? Like, your favorite scene, or, yeah, favorite scene? Uh, probably the violin scene, and also... Uh, the prize giving scene. Cool and I have to ask this how did you come up with the names for the characters because I thought especially like Swifty's real name Zendaya and her brother's name were just they're very cool so I wanted to know how you came up with them. Uh, uh, well Zendaya used to be like my favorite actress so I made um, Swifty's real name Zendaya because of that and then I guess a while ago I had heard of this name Zenith and I thought it was really cool and then the name Apple Doe I was just trying to look for like a quirky last name and so I just came up with it that's super um, cool okay <laughs> and then my final question I think before we start to wrap up would be I guess what theme did you want to convey with your novella uh what theme? Uh, what do you mean by theme? Or maybe not a theme exactly, but just like, what did you want to get across? Like, what do you want your readers to take away from reading your novella? Um, I guess just discovering your own talents and um, trying, not to, trying not to compare yourself with others too much, because I feel like right now with like social media and everything it sounds really um cliche but like with social media and everything um you know um comparison happens quite a bit um I had Instagram for a while but then I deleted it because I was comparing myself too much to others so I guess just acknowledging yourself and accepting yourself and your own talents um and just don't I've 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 seen this being said quite a bit but don't compare yourself 
to others, for example, oh my gosh, they're so good at maths. I'm terrible at maths. Because you might be comparing their strength with your weakness and just trying to find like what makes you happy. I think that's a really great message. And yeah, <laughs> I think unless there's like anything else you wanted to add about the novella, I have three final questions for you. Okay, sure. Uh, <laughs> so number one would be, what is your favorite thing about writing? Uh, just being able to express myself and um, make imaginary places and things just seem real. And just having like a, like when I finish a story, having a product that I can say is mine. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. And then if you have, if like, what advice would you give to other young writers about writing? Uh, just don't give up and just, uh, yeah, just plan nicely. But you don't have to follow anyone else's advice. Do what feels right for you. Um, and I guess if just, like if you're writing a story and like you just don't feel it, then maybe it's not the right story for you. Maybe there's another story out there which you have in your mind, which might be better for you. Um, Cause like I've written quite a few stories that I don't like anymore or like I've, I don't have any passion for writing for anymore. Um, writing is very much trial and error and uh, yeah, just do what feels right for you and when, it does feel right for you just keep on going and persisting and yeah you got this <laughs> and finally if you could tell someone about stone soup what would you say they're they're pretty cool um I feel like they're very passionate about publishing young people's work and uh they're very accepting of like lots of different stories and I've had a look at the website and it seems quite cool like they have they um, get um, other kids to illustrate other kids' work. And yeah, that's, that's really cool. Awesome. Well, I think that was all of the questions that I had for you. Thank you so much for doing this interview. It was really fun to talk to you. And you too. congratulations again on your novella. Thank you. Have a nice weekend, I guess. I think it's Friday for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well. Bye. Bye.